What's up YouTube? This is Chris and this is my channel Barnon 11970. Thank you as always for taking the time to check out this video. And today we are going to teach people, especially the newer people, about how the monetary system works here and the scam of basically how they are robbing people. And the reason they can get away with it for so long is the fact that they don't teach this stuff. You'll never see it on the TV. You'll never read about it in a newspaper. You'll never be taught it in schools. And the average person on the street just does not know about it. And considering at this point, I have over 12,000 subscribers. I've gotten a lot of new subscribers recently. I want to try and educate people in how their Ponzi scheme, their scam affects us all. Because if we don't have the knowledge, we are dependent then on other people and other systems to regulate us. And then we become dependent on them, hoping that they are doing the right thing. And as we could see all around the world, things are not getting better. Things are getting challenging. We'll put it that way. And educating the people and educating yourself is the best way. So if you've never watched any of my videos before, this is going to teach you some things you may not have heard of, or even if you know a little bit, it's going to give you a reinforcement of what is going on. Now I'm going to keep it relatively basic because I found if you do too much complicated things too much in one session, people are not going to remember it. They may feel lost and they may not research it further. So I'm going to give the basics. So not everything I speak about, that's not 100% of the process. So I'm going to basically lay down the foundation and you can go from there, but it's going to give you a better understanding of the corruption and how we are having our money stolen from us. So basically the way you have to start it out is you have two parts of the system here in the United States of America Corporation. You have, over here we have the Federal Reserve. Over here, we have the U.S. Treasury. Now, those of you who may or may not know, the Federal Reserve is a private-owned bank. It's actually not part of the United States of America Corporation. Now, the reason I keep saying it's a corporation is if you look at the Act of 1871, it will give details about the fact that this country is not what you think it is, and your um, constitution has been changed on that particular day. I have other videos that I talk about that, so I'm not going to get that in into detail here. So if you go on my must watch section, you'll see two videos that are called the truth about the um, United States law and you. There's a regular version and an extended version. I highly recommend you watch those. But the way it works is basically it starts out that our US Treasury, they sell bonds. Now, if you've ever had a savings bond before, you know that once, let's say you buy a hundred dollar savings bond, you can't immediately after you buy that, take it and exchange it for the $100. You need whatever amount of time for it to mature. The reason they do that is because they'll pay you interest. So basically what they're saying is, here's a piece of paper, a promissory note, that if you give us this amount of uh, time, whether it be five years, 10 years, up to 30 years, we will give you this amount plus interest. So basically you're paying up front 50%. So let's say you have a hundred dollar savings bond. You're going to pay $50 up front and it will take such and such amount of years to mature. And then past that point, it will get interest. So that's what the U S treasury is doing. So instead of our country making our own monetary system, making our own money, we sell bonds and places like some of the bigger banks and mainly the federal reserve purchases these bonds. Now, what does the Federal Reserve purchase them with? Now, if you know anything about the Federal Reserve, they say they are holders of gold. Now, that's primarily the only thing they supposedly hold. Now, the reason I say supposedly is there once was a law, and it's still in effect, that the Federal Reserve was supposed to be audited at least once a year. Well, it's been decades since anyone has actually audited the Federal Reserve. So we are only going on based on what we're told that the, the Federal Reserve has gold as a reserve to be able to pay for these bonds. Now, right there, let's just assume that they are correct with how much gold they have. Well, that's telling you right there that gold is money because they are purchasing these bonds from the U.S. Treasury. And the only thing they're doing is, is they're basically writing out a check that's backed by the gold that they say they have. Now, if you have a bar of gold or several bars of gold in your house, you don't go and put your gold in a vault 
and then write a check to someone and say, here, I have gold in my bank account. I'm writing you a check. And now you can use that to make purchases. It doesn't work that way. You need their monetary system, which means you need dollars. So think about it from the Federal Reserve's point of view. They supposedly have gold in the system to be able to buy these bonds from the treasury bonds from the U.S. Treasury. Now, they write them a check for these bonds. So technically, they're not giving them anything. They get these bonds, which mature over time. And if you know about bonds, you get interest on them. So that's how money is created. It starts out with the selling of bonds, which the Federal Reserve and other banks do buy as well. But I'm, we're just going to focus on the Federal Reserve. The Federal Reserve basically writes a check for that amount backed by nothing but supposedly gold, which we don't know because we haven't audited them for decades. And then money is created out of thin air, which they now distribute to the government, which they use by either giving some to the banks, giving it to the people, putting it into the system. So basically what they're doing is they're creating the monetary system based on nothing but an, a, an original promise. Now the Federal Reserve has all of these bonds which have to mature over time that we are paying back through our taxes. So every time you borrow money by going to the bank, getting paying with your credit card, you are creating debt which costs interest. Now, there's a thing that you may or may not be aware of called the um, fractional banking, which means when you make a loan from a bank or a deposit in a bank or pay it with something with a credit card, for example, through a banking system, basically the way it works is they are allowed to create multiple times that amount that you've deposited or borrowed in basically made up money. It could be anywhere from five times up to 10 times. I think at some places it's up to 19 to 20 times the amount. Now, I could be wrong on the specific numbers, but this is irrelevant because what I'm trying to tell you is for whatever amount that you borrow, they can create additional amounts and use those additional amounts to lend out to other people. Now, if you know anything about lending and borrowing, you also have to pay interest. So you're going to be paying interest on the original loan plus whatever amount through the fractional banking that they send out, which by in turn, they can continue onward and onward. So they're basically, they only need to keep about 10% of the actual dollar amount in the bank and make 10 times that amount just for made up money. Now, the way they create money, which it's not really money because it's not really backed by anything, but they create the monetary system based on the fact that you are borrowing this money, it comes into creation. So every time somebody makes a loan, they have to create more money by selling a bond, which the Federal Reserve and other banks buy. They pay for it with nothing but basically a check or digital numbers into a computer. They create only the base money. Now, what does that mean? Let's say, for example, you borrow $1,000. Now, you have to pay back that $1,000. That's the base amount. But you also have to pay interest. So here's where the Ponzi scam goes, where it continually rotates and continually increases. The base amount is called the principal, the principal amount. So if you borrow $1,000, the principal amount is $1,000. So let's just say, for argument's sakes, to make it easier, let's say that they've only sold $1,000 worth of bonds and created $1,000 in actual fiat currency, dollar bills, and you borrow all $1,000. Now, as you know, when you borrow money, you have to pay it back plus interest. First of all, if you borrow that money, you're borrowing it most likely to purchase something. No one's ever going to borrow $1,000 and just put it in the bank. That makes no sense, especially when you have to pay interest. So first off, if you buy one thing, you can't pay the loan back because you no longer have the $1,000, which is all in existence. But let's say for some strange reason, you borrow the $1,000 and you say, you know what? Since that's all the money in the world, I'm just going to hold on to it. I'm not going to purchase anything with it. I'm just going to use it to save it. Now you have to pay back the loan. Now, 
interest over time accumulates. So let's just assume the interest only is $1. So now you owe $1,000, which is the principal, plus $1. Well, if there's only $1,000 in existence, where does that other dollar come from? The way they do it is they have to, again, the Treasury has to sell more bonds with the Federal Reserve and other banks have to purchase, which creates more interest, more principal to allow you to get that extra dollar. So if you have now $1,001, well, now there's going to be even more interest. So that's how the scheme is. So when they talk about um, the fiscal cliff, how we're going to fall off it and how we are hitting the debt ceiling. What they're saying is we need people to borrow money to put more into the system. So it is a never ending spiral that you could never get out of because here's the principle, here's the interest. So this is all the money they create. This is all the money we owe. So be able to pay this amount. You have to build more money to pay this amount. Then you're adding even more interest and it continually goes up and up and up. So what happens is, and the reason why things start to slow down and things like what happened in the Great Depression is people, instead of spending their money, they start saving it because of the fear of how the economy is going. So when you're not spending your money and you're not borrowing money, money is not being created. So at that time, what people are doing is more often than not is paying down their debts. So they're not creating more money which actually reduces the amount of money in the system. And eventually it can potentially collapse the system. Either way, whether you keep borrowing and borrowing or you keep saving and saving, eventually it disrupts the system. So the people out there have to realize that I, I can't explain how other governments work because this is the country I live in. So if it's a little different, but it's pretty much going to be the same because they all print their money. It's all backed by nothing because after 1971, the whole world went off the gold standard. So it was everything was basically based off of the dollar, which was based off of oil, off of the petrodollar. Those are things you can get into yourself. But basically what's happening is, is our country is basically selling bonds to a foreign bank called the Federal Reserve, which is owned by shareholders. They basically write a check that is backed by nothing because the Federal Reserve doesn't sell anything. They're not a business. They don't produce anything to earn this money. So where does this money come from? And they just write them a check or just type numbers in a system, which they now put into the banking system, loaning out where they can create through fractional banking even more money than what's actually been borrowed. This is legal. And you have to pay that bucket back plus interest. Now they only create the principal amount and not the interest. So you have to keep borrowing and you have to keep raising the interest and keep borrowing. That's why you'll see the deficit continually go higher and higher and higher. And the more money you put in the system, the more it devalues the currency. So when you see prices rise, it's not that the things are getting more expensive. It's the value of your currency is going down. And the reason why they can postpone this is they send a lot of these bonds overseas where other countries buy them. And that sends the inflation outward. So the dollars are spread around the world instead of just in this country. The problem with that is once countries start losing the faith in the dollar, all of that money starts coming back into the system and it overwhelms the system. So having things like physical gold and silver are going to help protect your wealth because if you check the history of money, it always starts out and always goes back to gold. So it's a way to protect yourself. It's not a way to make yourself wealthy, although you can benefit because the people that have the paper dollars, when there is a potential crash and there have been throughout history, you don't want to be holding on to paper assets. And that's why even when people are investing in things like gold, they tend to go through paper stocks. Now, the scam with that is, like, for example, the reason they can't control oil as much when it comes to paper stocks is the average person isn't going to hoard oil. I mean, I seriously doubt anybody watching this video has their own oil field. And if you do, then you really don't have to worry about anything. So you can't store massive amounts of oil. So you're going to basically invest in the paper. But you can hoard physical gold and silver because you're talking a little coin this size 
is going to be valued at a thousand to twelve hundred dollars to thirteen hundred depending on what time it is it's going to have value in a little space so you can hoard a lot of that so things like for example if you're investing in wheat you're not going to store bushels of wheat in your house so it's more it's easier for them to manipulate the paper and they do the same thing with paper gold is every time they want to hammer the price down they just pump out pieces of paper and they sell what seems to be millions of ounces of either gold or silver in the span of a minute now if you think that's people are buying millions of ounces in a minute you know that's your thing but another thing i want you to research is back in the 60s with john f kennedy he tried to have executive order 11110 so that's four ones and an o and that executive order was to have our government and our treasury create our own dollar instead of going to a foreign bank called the federal reserve sell, selling bonds that we have to pay back plus an interest we were going to create our own money now is that one of the reasons why kennedy was assassinated who's to say i wasn't there but if you think of it about it in that way well after he was assassinated that executive order never took place and all of that money that they were supposed to create never went out so if the people in this country want to get their freedom back they want to get their power back they have to have the knowledge of what the system is and it's basically a ponzi scheme based on the fact of people not knowing how it works and then you are basically having to give your power over to somebody else and hoping that these politicians these bankers and this government is going to do the right thing now i've asked the question for people that no one has yet to answer can you name five politicians in your lifetime whether it's a president governor senator whatever can you name five of them in your lifetime that you could say were honest full of integrity and were helping the system to become better now you may find them eventually but it's not going to be easy which means there are thousands of politicians that the average person doesn't trust i mean comedians all the time and people joke all the time about how you know they're not good for the system and yet we put our trust in these people and we're the ones suffering because all of that interest the government's not paying it we are and all we're doing is is paying back the interest and we have to borrow more money because they don't create the money that can pay for the interest in other words if your loan was here and the interest raised it to here if they printed this amount of money you could pay it off it would be a zero balance but they always keep it uneven so this way you have to keep climbing up the ladder and that's why you see the deficit getting higher and higher and it will not lower with this current system and eventually one day it's going to collapse in on itself and that monetary system is going to have to be changed could it be backed by gold that remains to be seen but we cannot continue on the same trend indefinitely now that could take months it could take years it's hard to decide it's hard to tell because there is no exact science in this it's like blowing up a balloon you know that if you keep blowing into that balloon eventually that balloon is going to pop but you're never going to know the exact second that's going to happen so one of the things i advise people to do is think in this way i've always said this in my videos is, is it better to be five years too early than five seconds too late and the majority of people tend to react to things at the last minute just look at any snowstorm any hurricane any tragic event where millions of people are stranded wondering what to do and you'll see empty food shelves you'll see people online for 24 hours just to try and get what little gas they can in any kind of regular scenario look at the great depression look at other countries throughout the world that had financial collapses and how many millions of people woke up one day to find out that their system that they were so used to so comfortable with and so much took for granted no longer works and then what do you do so this is not about fear this is about education this is about preparation this is about being ahead of the game because you could be a millionaire and if the dollars or whatever currency you have loses its value and it's not something that people will continue to accept then it doesn't matter how many millions of something that no one wants you have so 
think about this. Now, again, this monetary system, I'm giving just the basics. I want people to be able to understand the beginnings of it. So this way they can say, well, all right, I grasp that now. And now let me dig into it further because knowledge is power. And because you're not going to be taught this in schools, your politicians are never going to tell you this. You're never going to go visit the Federal Reserve and they're going to tell you how the process really works. Banks are not going to tell you about fractional banking. They want you to rely on their trust. And if you think they're doing a good job, then don't do anything else. So for me, a video like this is the best way to get yourself educated. Because if you heard this in a seminar, if you heard it on the streets, if you just in whatever way you got it, if you don't retain that information, it could be lost. But something like this, a video, it stands the test of time. You can continually watch it over and over again until you get it. So if you're not watching my video, check out other people's videos. But learn how your system works. Stop being distracted by the Super Bowl and what is happening with the latest gossip in it with some movie star or you know trivial things. Because that is what they did in the Roman Empire. Before the collapse, or at least the partial collapse of the Roman Empire, they had the Roman Colosseum open 24 hours a day, seven days a week, free to the public. Because they wanted the people distracted. They wanted them entertained. They want them to look over here while they do stuff over here. And the, the people at the top will always be financially successful. They don't ultimately care about what happens to people in the... The, basically the bottom feeders. And that's us, but we don't have to be. It's all a matter of choice. If we choose to remain ignorant, nothing gets better. So I hope you will learn this stuff. I hope you appreciate the beginning parts of this information to help get you to understand it better. Because if you don't learn this, it one day might bite you and you don't want to have that happen. So I'm going to keep this video here. If you appreciate it, giving it a thumbs up and sharing it really helps to get this information out. Favoring it gives other people a chance. Um, recommending my channel helps bring people to information that I try and give out. I give this out freely because I care about what's happening in this country because what happens to one can eventually happen to us all. So I do this because it's the right thing to do. So I need your help to get this information out. So thank you for watching, guys. Leave your comments. We'd love to hear your opinions. Make your own videos. Share this if you have to. And uh, if you're not part of the Barn on Nation, we'd love for you to join by hitting subscribe. Thanks again, guys. Enjoy the rest of your night and learn what you need to learn.